Hi, I'm Sam. I'm an artist from Dallas, Texas, and here on my channel, I make art, rugs, and whatever else comes to mind. And this week, let's talk a little bit about backing. So I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see anybody post anything about tufting, my first thought is, what does the back look like? What does the back look like? What that back do? Can I see it? What are we doing on the back? What's under there? Can we get a peek? I just want to see what the back looks like. So because of that, I wanted to be transparent about the ways that I finish my pieces to share any information I may have, just in case, you know, maybe I have a technique you haven't thought about or a way of finishing or answer some questions that you may have about how to finish your backings, specifically for wall display. As I've said before, while I do make rugs, my favorite way to display them is the wall. Wall rugs, wall hangings, whatever you want to call them. I love the look of the texture on the wall, how it just stands out and just is art that you can literally touch. I think the first way of backing that almost everyone learns is a soft backing. Something like this. The piece is soft, foible. It's got your standard just felt backing and I choose to do a little D-ring. For my soft backed wall hangings, I use felt, D-rings, and then for adhesive, I use spray glue or hot glue. After cutting your fabric to size, you can spray glue it directly to the back of your piece. I personally like to use spray glue in the center and then use hot glue along the edges. I feel like this gives me a bit more control and I don't have to worry about any overspray that can occur with spray glue. Now, the D-rings that I use have that little extension on them where they would normally be screwed into the back of a painting. I use a bit of hot glue to attach the D-ring directly to the back of the tufted piece where that little extension will act as an anchor. I then cut a small slit into the backing and then slide only the ring part through. I feel like this makes it secure. I don't have to worry about going back and sewing it on. It looks neat and not tacked on. If you don't have D-rings, you can also just make a little loop using the same fabric as your backing and attach that instead. If you have pieces with more of a cutout or parts that need to be more rigid, like these hands that I make, floral wire is your best friend. You can cut it to size, twist it to whatever shape you need it to be, and then attach it directly to the back of the tufted piece before adding your backing. It will give you the structure you need while allowing you to still use a soft backing. I think that's just an easy, simple way. I love that because it's just a little D-ring and it's flat, it can also lay flat as a nice little table mat or display piece, put a cute little potted plant on it, some little knickknacks, and it really, you know, just adds that little extra touch to a space, literally. Personally, my favorite way of finishing wall hangings is doing what I call a hard backing. So that is when the piece will still have that soft cloth backing. However, it has been wrapped around a piece of hardboard. I feel like this gives the piece a bit of stiffness, it adds a little bit of weight and heft to it, and just makes it feel a little bit more finished and polished to me, in my opinion, and that is how I like finishing my pieces. For hard backing, I use felt, hardboard, sawtooth hangers, a staple gun, and spray glue. Also hot glue as well. So first, to clarify, I'm saying hardboard, not cardboard. <laughs> hardboard can be found at your local Home Depot or Lowe's in the lumber department. I use the quarter inch thick sheets that come in two by fours, then I just cut them down to the size I need. If you do this, it is best to have your hardboard already cut so that you can use it as the template for your tufted pieces. I cover the hardboard with the felt backing using spray glue, and sometimes I will use this Roberts carpet tape to help with the placement of my tufted piece before the next step. It just gives a little more wiggle room and I can reposition it, unlike spray glue where sometimes I feel like I have to get the placement right on the very first try. The next step is stapling. I first learned this technique from the finishing examples on tuftinggun.com before making some tweaks of my own. You want to staple in between the rows and usually it's easiest to find a good spot where colors meet. Just a heads up, be mindful of the surface you're stapling on because this might happen. Oh shit. Ugh. Seriously? Is this what we're doing today? 
Well, this is how you know it's not coming off. Awesome, awesome sauce, great. <laughs> And finally, I like to just hit the edges with a bit of hot glue and then nail the sawtooth hanger to the back. Trying to put this in tutorial form made me realize that this is a lot of steps, but I really do love the final look of it, so it is worth it to me. I especially like hard backing for larger pieces. I find that it keeps it from sagging in the back. You could just put two D-rings in the corner, but if the piece has too much weight to it, it could dip in the bottom or sag and fold. By having a hard backing, it ensures that it stays straight and flat on the wall and always looks the exact way that I want it to. One of the comments I received on one of my previous videos asked if there was a way to back pieces without gluing them. My first instinct was to say, absolutely not, you have to glue the back. But I wanted to figure out if there was indeed a way to display a tufted piece without gluing it. The very first thing I thought about was, of course, punch needling. I started my fiber arts journey looking at punch needling. That was the very first thing that I did. And I noticed a lot of the ways that punch needlers finished their works was they simply covered the back of the embroidery hoop, not necessarily added any sort of glue. If they did, they are hiding it and I've never seen it. I considered that something like a punch needle finish might work. The back is completely covered. There's no chance of the loops being snagged or coming out as long as you're careful with the front. So I thought maybe you could do something like that, utilize an embroidery hoop. But I also wanted to consider other options for display, which is how I ended up here. A picture frame. For this, all you need is a picture frame. I got two frames from Ikea. First, the standard picture frame, and then I also got a shadow box option just to test a different look. The only specific thing you should look for is one that comes with a matte board, which is that cardstock border sheet that comes in some frames. This will help hold the piece in place and gives it a clean sort of floating look. This is the piece that I framed. I did not glue it at all. I really wanted to see how it would turn out with no glue. I used the matte board as a pattern to try and get the piece as close to the right size as I could, but in typical tufted fashion, sometimes the pieces can grow a little bit. So I think next time I'm actually going to make it slightly smaller. I tried trimming first but it was still giving me a little bit of trouble because it wasn't glued. There was none of that stiffness that comes with gluing the piece. So it was a little difficult to wrestle into the mat board. It wanted to move around a lot. Like every single time I touched it, it shifted. I did eventually get it into the frame, but what I noticed is it wanted to bow out because it was so flexible. So I ended up going back in with my clippers, trimming the edges down even more to help it fit better, and adding a big piece of that Roberts double-sided tape behind it to stop it from bowing out, and it worked perfectly. I also tried a version with glue. I just used the Elmer's glue wall. It's just a standard PVA glue. It was much easier to handle and didn't slide around as much because it was a bit more rigid. Overall, this works with or without glue, but it was just the slightest bit easier with it glued. This seems like a perfectly viable option to display your pieces. I think I prefer the flatter frame just because you can see a bit more of the texture when it sits on the wall. But again, I think this is a really cool way to finish your pieces if you have a bunch of like extra picture frames laying around. And it's just, you can just, look at that. Just another way to display your work and have fun with it and do something a little extra. To be fair, there are also other ways that I've seen people finish their works, utilizing a combination of soft backing and hanging the piece from a dowel. I do not have experience with this, so I cannot show you how. However, I have definitely seen them and I'm sure you can find somebody that breaks that process down a little bit for you. I've also seen a new trend with really cute chains, like hanging chains from the top. I've seen a couple of those on Instagram. I think they turn out really, really cool. And again, it just adds an extra flair of personality and just something special to your piece. And I think that's really important and that's what keeps it fun. 
So there you have it, a little bit of backing 101. I hope this answered any questions you may have about what does the back look like? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell to be notified when I post my next one. As always, remember, no matter what you do, you don't gotta be perfect. You just have to make progress. I'm Sam, I made that, and you should make something too. Sam made that. No, I don't know what's going on with my hair. Yes, I realize it's been different in every video. That trend will probably continue. Welcome to Sam's world.